thank God for for my salvation because without him, nothing will, nothing will be possible. And I'm just thankful that I'm here. <sighs> thank you, Lord. Okay. And today, if... Okay. <laughs> Let's pray. I'll pray it in. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for the opportunity that you're giving me, Lord. Let me... Ex Remove me from the pulpit and just let me express what you have put in my heart to share with your people, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. And if you guys could open up your Bibles to 2 Corinthians 4.18. So, so we fix, okay. And the, and the word of the Lord says, so we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what, it, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Brothers and sisters, death is inevitable for all of us. And many, and many of our, our loved ones and people in our community and all over the world are living and dying without knowing the good news of Jesus. Eternity should propel and drive us with an urgent desire to share the gospel. Uh, Romans 1.16 reads, I am not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everybody who leaves. And I believe, you know, that my family is going to get saved. Even though there's a language barrier with some of my people, my family, especially my mother, I know she's going to, you know, she's going to walk in and she's going to get saved. I, that's, that's the hope I have. Church, we must, have, we must share the gospel with others. Jesus has made a way for all the people to join his kingdom through the cross in which he died for our sins. We must share the truth with others for the eternal future depends on it. When we die and leave the searchers, we will spend eternity somewhere. The Bible promises that everybody who welcomes Jesus into their lives will spend eternity in heaven. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, one and only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's the gift. I think that's the meat of the gospel. That's, I was thinking when I was preparing the message, I was just, you know, like just meditating on the word. And that's, that's what God gives us, you know, like. Our Lord in his early ministry was very concerned in helping us understand the eternity of reality. Jesus describes heaven as a real place where he would live with his disciples. Jesus also thought with authority on hell. Jesus described, he he describes hell as a blazing furnace, a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. But I got good news for you, church. Eternal life with Jesus starts the minute we ask him into our hearts. And that's something I learned. The life we start with Jesus on earth will continue into eternity. And John 5, 24 says, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my words and believes him who sent me as, has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Church, what I'm trying to convey is eternity in heaven is an instant gift. It is not a lifetime achievement or what. We often think that we have to earn eternity in heaven, but Jesus showed us otherwise. While Jesus was hung on the cross, he told one of the criminals next to him, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. This man didn't even have a lifetime of good deeds to point back to. He also never got a chance to turn from his life of crying. What he did get a chance to do was simply believe in Jesus and accept him into his heart. That was more than enough. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For the by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God and not a result of work so that no one may boast. In conclusion, church, God has a purpose for us in our lives here on earth, but his plans for us don't end here. The Bible says God's plans are due forever. His purposes last eternally. We must keep running the, the good race in our faith every day, always keeping our eyes on our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our life and eternal salvation was bought at a price, the precious blood of Jesus Never lose sight of the cross of Christ and how it opened up the way for us to come boldly to our Holy Father forever. Amen. And I'll be praying now. Uh, Padre, pues, uh, te agradezco, Señor, por la oportunidad que me has dado, Señor, de, 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 de pararme detrás de este púlpito, Señor, y pues de transmitir tu palabra, Señor. Este, gracias, Señor, por mi salvación y gracias porque eres bueno, Señor. En el nombre de Jesús. Amén. You know, uh, right before you sit down, I just want to say, you know, thank you, amen, uh, to the Lord. You know, uh, thank God for salvation. You know, this, this November 2nd is going to be 25 years, amen, of God's keeping power. God in his hand upon my life, 
It was November 2nd, 1997, man. I walked into the Christian uh, men's recovery home, amen, right there in Santa Ana. And man, I don't regret not one minute, amen, that I was there in that home. And, uh, you know, just, I mean, good things come out of the home, uh, you know, and I just want to thank God for my, our pastor. Come on, isn't Pastor Ezra and Sister Ruth our pastors, aren't they? Mm. So grateful for them. And, uh, you know, if you didn't know, this is, this is, uh, this is clergy month, amen. A, a clergy appreciation month. And uh, the whole month, all over, the, all over Christianity, they, 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 they uh, you know, they're appreciating, amen, their pastors. So, amen. Next time you see pastor, give him a hug. Tell him thank you, amen. Thank you for, I'm going to just thankful for, for, for obedience, thankful for his, his leadership, thankful for his friendship tell our pastors thank you amen and uh you know uh and uh you know i just i'm grateful for the ministry of victory outreach the family of victory outreach the vision of victory outreach amen and the and the and the man and the promises that we have amen in the ministry and so i just wanted to real quick just thank god for that amen but i'm gonna pray amen so pray with me amen father we thank you lord you're so good Without you, Lord, we wouldn't be here. And God, here tonight, Lord, it's going to be you to continue to propel us forward. Propel us into the future that you have for us. Lord, we need you here tonight, the plan that you have for us. We need, Lord, your word that you have for us. We need our hearts, Lord, God, to be right and ready for your word. And God, I just pray, remove things, Lord, things we came in with, things we were struggling with. I pray, God, that here tonight you would speak right into, Lord God, our lives. Speak life, speak truth, speak liberty. God, just have your way. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord one more good praise offering because we like to praise God. You may be seated. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You know, tonight is 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 uh, it's it's awesome to be on our come as you are services amen because you get to come as you are come right out of work hello somebody come come just you know you just roll in you crawl in you just slide in some of you amen but it's all good amen but we come amen we come as we are and you know coming to church you know it's kind of kind of like dating somebody you like Amen. It's kind of like dating somebody you like. It, 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 how many know it shouldn't be rushed? And, and if, you, if, if you come and you jump right in, you can get hurt. Because, because you, you jump right in, you rush right in for all the wrong reasons. And, and you know, maybe we've had some, some share of, you know, different churches. Amen. But it didn't last. Amen. But let this time be different. Amen. And it's all right, amen, to say oohs and ahs and laugh and joke. And it's all right. It, it's not illegal. Amen. And, you know, but some things, amen, are just, you know, they're just funny. So it's okay to laugh here tonight. It's okay to say amen. I'm going to need a little help here tonight because I really believe God has a word for you. Amen. You know, I remember growing up, amen, in the church and, you know, just being drugged to services. And I, I remember, you know, my, my grandma, you know, as I was growing up, uh, you know, she would, you know, be right there with her fingers. Ever, you ever had the, that grandma with her fingers and she would pinch you? And, you know, because you're just acting up or you're acting out of character, and there you are, and there she is, you know, she's there pinching you, and, you know, but uh, I, I knew, and, I, and you know, and I, I probably deserved it. I probably deserved to be pinched. I, I, I probably deserved to, to be grabbed, and, uh, but I knew that when she would pinch and twist, it was the devil. I knew it, man. I was just like, no, I'm just, I'm just messing. How many love their grandmas, amen? You know, we've been talking about stewardship. Uh, we've been uh, talking this whole month, and stewardship is, is the job of supervising, managing, or taking care of something or someone else's property. We've been going over that. 
Stewardship first begins, though, with us. See, here tonight, we have to be living for what we were created to be. See, we can't, we can't go on and, and not be taking care of ourselves and the gifts and the resources and the blessings that God has given to us and think that we can go and take care of somebody else and lead them to the Lord and lead them, amen, in their finances and, and you know, in their families. God wants us to begin with us. How many know here tonight, just we need to begin with you and f with me. And stewardship has been the, the topic all month, and we've been going over finances. You know, I, uh, we went over financial tithing and how we can give back, in it, and it honors God. And we've been talking about relationship with God and how to have that clean life by all the weeds being pulled out. And we, we, we talked about having a, a, a new heart, God's heart, a changed heart that is filled with God's love, true love. Amen. How many know God's love is true love? The world's love is fake. But God's love, what Jesus did on the cross, that's true love. And here tonight, we're going to be talking about family, amen. So I have the privilege of talking about family. And I want to talk about the success in family here tonight. I really believe God wants to give us success in our families. God wants to give us success in our homes. God wants to give us success with our children. God wants to give us success in our marriages. Can I hear all the, married, all the marriages say amen? Uh, stewardship for us is managing our family to be successful in the kingdom of God. Managing our family to be successful in the kingdom of God. That should be our pursuit. That should be our passion to manage our family to be successful in the kingdom of God. Amen. How many know we want our, our kingdom of God the kingdom of God to be filled with our family members, to be filled with our children, to be filled with our children's children, and so on. We want it. And we have to manage our family to be successful for the kingdom of God. Luke chapter 8, that's where I want to talk about here tonight. I only got 28 minutes, according to the clock. So... Bear with me. I, I want to just do maybe 15, 20 minutes. Is that all right? Yeah, some of you are like, yeah. <laughs> I can already smell them street dogs. Anybody been fasting? Any, anybody been like not, you know, you've been separated to the Lord. You smell them street dogs and it's over. You know, you give in to your flesh and that's it. Luke chapter 8, are you there? Thank you. You're, you're laughing. It's really, it's really good. It's not illegal. <laughs> Luke chapter 8, starting at verse 1. Uh, if you're there, say amen. amen. All right. St Luke chapter 8, verse 1. After this, Jesus traveled about from one town and village to another, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom of God. The 12 were with him. And also some women who had been cured of evil spirits and diseases, Mary called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had come out. Hello, sisters. Joanna, the wife of Chusa, the manager of Herod's household, Susanna, and many others. So that means the men. Come on now. Uh, hey, I, I cleaned it up. Give it. I try to be biased here tonight. No. These women were helping to support them out of their own means. That's powerful. They, God had called a group. God had called men in. God had called a, a, a people. God had touched lives. God had spoken into their lives. God had trained them. God had delivered them. And there they were supporting and the Bible says, out of their own means. Man, I love that. 
Verse 19 through 21, that's where I want to end in this passage, is that now Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. Someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. And verse 21 said, he replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. Amen. Tonight, we want to talk about family. Woo! Man, what did Jesus say? My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. So here tonight, family, we have family in the physical and we have family in the spiritual. See, a physical family is made up through marriage birth or adoption when a spiritual family is in Christ there's that song in Christ alone man I love it because you know what it is in Christ where we're new creations it's in Christ where the old has passed and the new has come give God some praise amen because you're not whoo man that's good you're not who you used to be you may not be where you want to be, but at least you're not who you used to be. And it's in Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 28 said, Neither Jew nor Greek, neither slave nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Amen. Man, I learned early in Christianity uh, that you know, family of God, you know, that the church is my family, that the brothers in Christ, the brothers and sisters in the church are my family. And, you know, I learned that early on. And, you know, you, you might be new here tonight. You might be new to Christ. You, you, you might have been around for a while. And then let me remind you and let me share with you, man, we're family here tonight. You're, you're my brothers and say, just call me, just like the brother said, Big Veto. Not really. Just call me brother, amen. My name is Brother Robert, amen. I'm glad to serve you here tonight, amen. And uh, we are also adopted into the, a family of love where in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 says, In love he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with with his pleasure and will. See, you and I here today in church, in Christ, pleases God. See, you and I here today in church, in Christ, is the will of God. See, you might be asking, well, what is the will of God? What's the plan? What is God's purpose for my life? Well, according to that scripture, is to please him and to do his will. Here tonight... We're talking about success in family, and so success, it's not so much what I'm working towards uh, in the physical. See, here tonight, I, I'm looking to spend what I got on my wife and I, amen, and leave practically nothing in the physical for my children. That's all right. See, because it's not so much what I leave my children that will make them successful. It's more of what I leave in my children that I will help them to be successful. That's what I've been working towards all my life. I, I, it's all right. I've taken an oath of, uh, of uh, you know, humility. I've taken an oath of, you know, servitude. I, I've taken an oath, amen, where, you know, it's all right if, if we're sacrificing, if we're left without, if we're left with little, amen. I've learned the secret of being content, amen, though with much or though with little, amen. My contentment is in the Lord. And if I leave enough in them, then they will have enough to make something for their own life. See, the secret of our success is by our daily agenda. Jesus said, my family are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. That's all my wife and I, we've been trying to do is just be that example to our children. We've just been the, trying to be those parents that, you know, they can believe in and look to and, and have confidence in and feel so that security and, and that sense of hope. Because, man, if God can do it in our lives 
and we were all messed up, then God can definitely do something more powerful. Hello, somebody. See here tonight, how do we manage our family to be successful in the kingdom of God? I have three things, and then we're out of here. I said 15, 20 minutes. Amen. Praise God. Is that all right? And number one is to show up. Number one is to show up. See, here tonight, how are we going to manage our family to be successful in the kingdom of God? Well, according to Jesus, he was saying, man, Jesus' mother and brothers came to see him, but they were not able to get near him because of the crowd. All we need to do is just show up and not give up. See, it's going to take commitment when we show up. It takes commitment to show up. It takes commitment to keep going and showing up. See, we need to make a commitment to the, our attendance at our church. We need to make a commitment to our trainings that we have. We need to make a commitment to meetings and Bible studies and V-Life and Veti, to hearing God's word with our family. Uh, you know, I, I'm blessed to, to say that my, my son and daughter, they've, at the ages, I think, of 14 and 16, amen, they, they, they graduated V-Life, Victory Life, amen. They're graduates of V-Life. You know, we take them everywhere we go. We've always done that. We've always taken them it, it, when, they, when they were just born. I used to have uh, uh, my son strapped or, or on my shoulders, and then, and then my daughter uh, pushing her in the thing, and we were going out to the streets evangelizing. You know, we, we would do everything. We would, we would have uh, my, my, my son running around the church and, and my daughter right there in her carrier as we were worshiping, practicing worship to lay. You know, those are just some of the things that we did, you know, as parents, as missionaries, uh, just believing God. You know, for souls. And you know what? That, you know what? That they would grow up and, and believe God for souls as well. You know, I, I'm blessed, amen, that my children are, 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 are right here serving God. They're, they're right here worshiping God. That, you know, they're, they're serving the Lord. I'm blessed, amen. We're blessed that, you know, uh, here tonight, I, I'm blessed that my sister's here, you know. I'm blessed that my niece is here. I'm blessed that my mom is here. I'm blessed that my nephew is here. And here tonight we have four generations. I'm blessed to see that. You know, and I always tell my children, man, I, you know, you're, you're, you're pretty good children. But you know what I want to see is for you to be pretty good adults. Pretty good men and women of God. You know, and here tonight. But it, it, just talking about showing up, making a commitment. See, because we need to hear God's word. It's the word of God that it, it, it cleans us, it corrects us, it, it purifies us. And it's the word of God. We See, we need to be a part of the vision of the church. SGV for Jesus. I said the San Gabriel Valley for Jesus. La Puente for Jesus. West Covina for Jesus. Covina for Jesus, Hacienda Heights, Rolling Heights, El Monte, Bassett, Valinda for Jesus. Man, but Jesus' mother and bros were caught out on the lack of. Their lack of commitment, their lack of attendance, their lack of accountability. You know, how many know we need to have, it's okay to have constructive criticism. It, it, how many know constructive criticism is good? It's good. See, a discipler to tell us the truth. Who's discipling you? See, because why? Because we need to be the ones to press through the crowd. They didn't show up because of the crowd. But we need to press through the crowd. I said, we need to press. How many got some issues that you need to keep pressing in? You need to keep pressing on. You need to show up no matter what's going on in your life. Like that woman with the issue of blood, she just kept pressing in. No matter what, she said, if I can only touch the hem of his garment. 
If I can only touch him, I could be made whole. If I can only touch him, I could be made complete. How many know sometimes we just need to show up, and if we could just show up, man, I could be made whole. If I could just show up, I could be made complete. We need to press through the crown. See, mom and dad need to show commitment at home. They need to show commitment to each other. They need to show commitment to the church. They need to show commitment to others. How else are the children going to learn about commitment? Through your commitment, children will learn priority, which is order. Through your commitment, children will learn discipline, which is stability. Children will learn responsibility, which is maturity. Children will learn devotion, which will get them closer to God. Children will learn love, which will give them better relationships. And children will learn passion and how to spend their energy. Can I hear you say amen? They're here tonight to show up. We just need to show up. How do we manage our family to be successful in the kingdom of God? First is to show up. But second is to listen close. See, here tonight, we need to listen close. In verse 20, the Bible says, someone told him, your mother and brothers are standing outside wanting to see you. See, religion here tonight will have you on the outside. Religion will will have you waiting somewhere else. Religion doesn't save. Relationship with God saves. Religion is man's attempt to reach God. But Christianity is God's attempt to reach man. And here tonight, we need to get in. We need to listen close because it's churchianity or Christianity, religion or relationship. See, religion is shallow, self, self-ambitious, greedy, having a form of godliness but denying the power of God. In Matthew 7, it says, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. See, here tonight, our road to success is narrow. Oh, let me share that again, my friend. Our road to success, it's narrow. See, here tonight, our road to success needs to be narrow. See, things, we we need things to lean into in order to be narrow. There are, our circle of counsel should get smaller. I said our circle of counsel that we get from the world should get smaller. See, we need spiritual advisors. We need wise counselors. Not moms and aunties advice. Not Cleo, not horoscopes, not, not uncle, not palm reading. I said, Cleo, you probably know how old I am now. (laughs) Relationship is, as Jesus said, those that hear the word of God. Is there anybody listening here tonight? Is there anybody here tonight that is not doing what the word said, that, that, man, we're forever here? We're forever uh, hearing, but never, never uh, perceiving. We're forever hearing, but not listening. But God is saying, man, I want you to listen. I want you to hear what I am saying. The Bible says, hear what the Spirit of God is saying. We need to listen to messages. We need to feed ourselves. How many here, to, here tonight, the caterpillar, the caterpillar needs to eat? I said the caterpillar needs to eat. And so let every hear, ear hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Can you hear the voice of God? Can you hear the, 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 uh, can you hear the Lord speak to you when you're reading your word? Can you, he, can you uh, sense the impression of the Holy Ghost upon your life wanting something from you? Wanting your time? Wanting for you to to rise and and give him glory, wanting for you to rise and and take your place, kneel down, bowing down before our Lord God and and our maker. 
See, Jesus said, hear the word of God. See, the Bible says, I am the good shepherd, and my sheep know my voice. He says, I am your shepherd. And he says, my sheep know my voice. We need to lean in. Here tonight, are you leaning in? You know, it, that's what, it, that's what the, 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 um, it looks like when you're trying to, I, I do that all the time. I guess I'm, because I'm getting older. You know, sometimes I'll turn my head in order to hear. I'm like. But, but when you do that, right, you kind of get that signal, <laughs> that voice tremble, that treble. And it, sometimes you could just, you can't hear it all, but you can figure it out. <laughs> but we need to lean in. We need to train our hearing. I said we need to train our hearing, lean in. We need to pay attention. We need to make some changes to get as close as possible. See, how do we manage our family to be successful in the kingdom of God? Well, number one is to show up. Number two is to listen close. But number three is to work it out. I said, you and I, we need to work it out. Marriages, you need, just need to work it out. Relationships, amen, between you and your children, just work it out. See, here tonight, we just need to work it out. How many know family scuffles a little bit? See, here tonight, you, you could have an issue with, with your brother or sister right here in the church. But, man, God's saying, let's work that out. See, tonight, God wants us to work it out right here at the altar, whatever it takes. Because the Bible says, man, you know, that uh, our prayers aren't, aren't, are hindered when we have uh, uh, an issue with our brother or sister. That was a free one, amen. <laughs> Verse 21 said, he replied, my mother and brothers are those who hear God's word and put it into practice. See, Jesus looked at his disciples when, when he said that. And he looked at his disciples and, at them and saying, man, those who do the will of my God is my family. He's all pointing at them. He's like, man, you're my brothers. You're my mother. And God wants a relationship with you. See, God's will is that none would perish, but that all would come to repentance. See, Jesus saves here tonight. See, you, you and I, if you, if you don't know Christ as your Lord and Savior here tonight, you have an opportunity to give your heart and your life to God. Why? So there could be success in your family and in your life. God wants a partnership with you. He not only wants a relationship with you, but he wants a partnership with you. God's will is that you are a doer of his word, not just a hearer. Jesus is teaching. He's always teaching. He was teaching his disciples right there. He was teaching the crowd. He's always teaching us, saying, man, I, I, I just don't want your ear. I want your heart. God, not, not uh, just, just a relationship with us, not just a partnership with us, but an ownership with us. And ownership from us. God's will is to go into all the world and preach the good news. Jesus not only saves, Jesus not only teaches, but Jesus sends. Here tonight, you know, there's a saying that practice makes perfect. Practice makes perfect. And we need to practice his presence. We need to practice his promise. Joshua 1.8, and as the worship team comes on up, Joshua 1.8, the Bible says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. He says, keep it always as something that you're talking about. How many know here tonight, well, man, we, we want the blessing, we want success, we want prosperity. Well, God is saying, Keep it always in your conversation. He says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you can be careful to do everything written in it. You know, here tonight, how many, you, you, might, you might understand that, man, you, you take a left or you take a right sometimes. 
when you should be, be, be right with the Lord or you should be focused on God. Well, right here the Bible says it's because, man, we're not meditating on God enough. He says we we'll meditate day and night. Day and night. How many of us meditate on God day and night? Always just trying to think of God, think of his word, think of, of what he's saying, think about our lives and think about how we can uh, apply God's word into our life, applying God's word into our problems. You know, the word of God is to be that standard in our hearts, in our lives of how we're to live, what we're to do on a day to day basis. Things that we need to change, things we need to do for him, for his honor and glory that will please him, that will give him uh, 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 just uh, uh, the pleasure of us serving him. The Bible says, then you will be prosperous and successful. You know, here tonight, meditation takes work. Meditation takes work. See, when you meditate, you have to concentrate. You have to concentrate until you're focused. You know, we, we need alone time in order to meditate. You know, if you're, if you're trying to meditate and you get a phone ring, you get a, you know, you're trying to meditate and you get the kids running in, trying to meditate and, and the wife's calling you, trying to meditate and the job's calling you, Trying to meditate in the world's calling. I'm telling you. I mean, it will continue to happen, but we have to continue to work at it. Meditation is what we do. The Bible says, you know, to meditate on it day and night. So it's not something, it's, a, it's not a suggestion. It's not, it's not something that says, oh, when you have time. No, it's saying something that it's what we do day and night if we want to be prosperous and successful. Meditation is what we work at. It fixes our thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right. We need to make some changes in order to meditate. We need to make some changes in order to uh, show up. We need to make some changes in order to hear, hear a little bit better. We need to make some changes in order to meditate. Professional teams, they practice to win. I'm here to let you know that, man, we can win. Amen. You and I, we can win. Amen. Jesus has already done it. All we got to do is walk in it in the word of God, practicing his presence. Man, it helps us to stay on that winning edge. See, teamwork makes the dream work. See, you here tonight, you're not alone. Remember, we're family. We're family here tonight. You know, I love the analogy of being in trenches in a time of war because I'm relying on my brother next to me to, to look in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ways that I can't see. And I'm going to look in the ways that he can't see. And we got each other's back. See, family is better together. I said, family is better together. Doesn't, isn't, isn't it, uh, man, it's, it's pretty tough when, man, you and your siblings are fighting. Or, or you and your, you know, you just got into a heated uh, conversation in your marriage. Or, or you just, man, it's just not going too well there in your home. But man, family is better together we're going to be able to run this race and and, and, and and win amen the prize of the high calling of jesus christ together we can the family is better together we is better than me 
The family of God here tonight is our spiritual family. And the family of God is a partnership, a relationship, and a brotherhood and a sisterhood. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us here at Victory Outreach West Covina. We hope you enjoyed your time. Also, I want to encourage you to subscribe and click the notification bell. That way you get notified every time we go live. You won't miss a service. Stay connected with us. And you can also partner with us in your giving if you want to bless the ministry financially so we can continue the work that God is doing here. You can do that at any time. I hope you share it. And I hope you come to visit us live real soon. God bless you.